Hello, everybody. We are picking up where we last left off on this bottom activity in your page of your textbook, um, page 234 to page 235. We got to fill in all of these boxes. Um, hopefully you watched this video before the Doppler effect video. I'm going to talk about Doppler effect at the end. It's just, it's something that's really cool and you can experience in your everyday life. Um, yeah. So for question three, it says decide. Use the key below to label the sounds in the picture as they would be heard by this guy, this man sitting on the bench. And we're supposed to explain our labels. Explain our labels. So let's first start off with this bird. Do birds have high pitch or low pitch? They have high pitch. So HP should go where that bird is, HP. And would it be loud or would it be soft? Well, the bird is right next to him, so we might think that it's loud. So you can write HP, a comma, and then L. Let's look at this guy on his motorbike right here, okay? We're not going to bother with pitch, but would this guy be loud or soft? He would be loud, right? Motorbikes aren't necessarily quiet. You would hear him just as he's going on. How about these two dogs? We have a big dog and a little dog. When it comes to pitch, which one of these two would have high pitch and which one of those two would have low pitch? Yeah, the big dog is going to have low pitch and the tiny dog is going to have a high pitch. Would they be loud or soft? Yes, both of them would be loud. Both of them would be loud. Let's look at this person on a bicycle. Do bicycles make the same amount of noise as motorbikes? No, they don't make the same volume. Um, and one of the reasons why we wouldn't actually include pitch is that these don't really have pitch. There's a difference between pitch and noise. They're both sound, but not everything would actually have what we would call pitch. Um, but this man talking on the bike or on the bike, is he going to be loud or soft? Soft. He would be soft, according to this man. Um, you wouldn't hear them as much. He's farther away. His bike doesn't make a lot of noise. So yeah, soft. What about this bird up in the tree? We know that this bird was loud. This bird, that's right, is soft. Now, would this bird have a high pitch or a low pitch? High pitch. It would be high pitch and soft, while this one was high, high pitch or HP and loud or L. Let's look at this guy on the lawnmower. Are lawnmowers quiet? Not any that I've heard. This is a big L for loud. Loud, loud, loud. All right, we have a couple more people. This person is listening to music. Do you think the music that he is listening to is loud or soft to him? Not to him, but to him. It is soft, that's right, S, right there. Now these two ladies that are talking, looks like they're talking about something important. Are they loud or soft to him? Soft. Yes, so you should put an S. It's not like they're yelling. Now, this person here is playing a trombone. Not a trombone. I'm so sorry. He's not playing a trombone. Oh, uh, what do you call those things? Sousaphone? I think it's a sousaphone. It's not a tuba because tubas are bigger. But he's playing a very large instrument. <laughs> I think it's a sousaphone. This makes a loud noise, so L for loud. 
Sousaphones also have a pitch because it's an instrument. We would write LP, it's a low pitch. This person over here that's playing the drums, he is also loud, so you'd put an L there. Drums don't really have a pitch. They can have a pitch depending on what drum you're playing, but it looks like he's playing cymbals, and those are usually marked with an X and don't have a pitch. All right, we have two more people. We have these people that are dancing or something. Are they loud or soft, according to this guy? They would be soft. They're not playing a loud instrument. And this is playing, this woman is playing the flute. The flute. So based off of what you've learned with Mr. Williams, which one of these is louder than the other? This is quieter. So this would be soft. Is this higher pitch or lower pitch? Higher pitch. So you would put an HP, an S and an HP. I think we got everybody. Let's move on. I'm going to exit into single page mode. All right, for a sound to be heard, energy must cause an object to vibrate. Vibrating objects send off energy as sound waves. The energy is transferred through the air as the sound waves move because it's being passed along from vibration from vibration, from particle to particle. Eventually, it will reach our ear and our eardrum will absorb some of the energy and vibrate. Those vibrates, vibrations will tell us the sound and the pitch that we are listening to, thanks to our eardrum. This is a tuning fork. Tuning forks can create clear pitch, clear sound, not noise. Um, if we had some or if we were at school, I would demonstrate a tuning fork to you. Um, you kind of hit the tuning fork against your hand and then you put it up to your ear and you can hear a very clear sound. People use it to help start singing the correct note and to tune other things. Um, but in this picture, they're taking the vibrating tuning fork and transferring it to the liquid. So what effects does this energy transfer have on the liquid and on the tuning fork? What will happen to the water? Yeah, the water surface is going to move and splash. Correct. What's going to happen to this tuning fork? The tuning fork will vibrate less. Good. All right, we are going to skip this section and we're going to move on to this last page. Here's a fun lab if you have the chance to do it. We would have done it in class, but we're not gonna have class together. But if you have two plastic cups or two styrofoam cups and you have string and you are able to cut a piece of string and thread it through the cups, like punch a hole in the cups, um, so the string is connecting the two cups. So usually through the bottom of the cup, I poke a hole and then I tie a knot on each bottom of each cup. And then you can create a telephone. And you should be able to, one of you, if you have someone else in your house, you talk into the cup, the other person puts the cup up to their ear, and they're able to hear it because the sound waves vibrate on the string. It's really cool, it's really fun. Um, so right here, we have someone getting their teeth cleaned. They use, uh, in order to clean, they use this tool. Maybe you remember this tool. Um, sound vibrations shake dental plaque loose as a stream of water rinses it out. Without a water stream in the picture above, this cleaning tip might overheat. Why do you think this would happen?
Well, the previous page talks about energy being transferred. So we have sound energy. Energy can be transferred into what? Heat. That's right. Some energy is transformed into heat when energy changes form. So some of it is transformed into heat, which is why it might overheat if you didn't have water. All right, let's look at question six and question seven. Question six says, why is the pitch of a thick guitar string lower than the pitch of a thin string? So I have six strings on a guitar, like I said. I have a low string that makes that noise, and then a, um, a sorry, that's a thick string. And then I have a thin string. So thick, thin. Why is the thick one lower? What do you think? The lower string vibrates, the thicker string vibrates more slowly. It vibrates more slowly, so it has a lower frequency, which means a lower pitch. So it vibrates slowly. Compared to the high pitch string or the thin string, it vibrates faster, higher frequency, higher pitch. Question seven, how does an ear help you hear a sound? Well, in this section, it talked about how sound waves vibrate through the air, through air particles. When waves hit the eardrum, that energy is then transferred into a way our brain can understand it. And we're able to detect that vibration as sound and based on the speed of the vibration and the frequency, figure out the pitch and how strong the, the vibration, because that's volume. All right, after this, I want you to watch that video on the Doppler effect. So what is the Doppler effect? Maybe you've heard of that before. The Doppler effect is the change in the frequency of sound waves and therefore the pitch of sound. So when an object that is making a noise comes towards us, we sometimes hear the pitch get higher. And then when it leaves us, the pitch gets lower. This is because the frequency is changing. The sound waves are bouncing off of us in a shorter distance as it's coming towards us, making the pitch higher. And it is going away from us. The sound waves are, are the frequency is becoming slower, which is causing the pitch to lower. If your parents say yes, or your guardians say yes, um, if you have someone in your house that can run by you, like, run down the hall and you'll notice the pitch changes. They didn't change notes. It's just they were running towards you and then away from you and that affected the pitch, just like this car in this video. When you listen to this video, have your volume down low. Don't have it up high. Like if you're listening on headphones, don't have your volume up high because it's a car horn. And so notice how the pitch changes as the car is moving towards and the car is moving away. All right, I hope you have fun doing your homework tomorrow. I'll see you later. Have fun enjoying sound.